Um, my name is Henrik Reinders, and I uh, work with Taste South Heath and Local Catch. And um, next to me is my coll colleague Florence um, Huron from Nozica. And to, this afternoon, we're going to talk about our projects. We will first hear from Florence about um, Mr. Goodfish that operates in Europe. Then you will hear from me about Local Catch, which operates in, the, in England. And then uh, right at the end, I'm going to tell you very shortly and briefly about other European initiatives that might be of interest to you and invite Mr. Luke Fish on the, on the stage because I want to talk to him about the barriers to, and, and the barriers and, and the strengths to sourcing local food. Okay, Florence. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Florence. Uh, you already have a small presentation of the Mr. Goodfish program by one of my colleagues. And I will try to uh, describe the program in detail and answer the question you could have. Uh, so the Mr. Goodfish program uh, is a European initiative. Um, it has been based on an observation that 80% uh, of fish stocks are fully exploited or overexploited. Uh, because we know that uh, there is a growing demand on, uh, for fish, we really need to uh, be more responsible uh, by consuming uh, seafood products. And uh, we really believe that we have uh, to do something, uh, each of us, and to make small action uh, every day to uh, change the, the consumer habits. Um, we, we have one uh, number of which is for us really important. Uh, if um, the total visitor of one aquarium, so if one million visitor to a large aquarium change their habits by consuming once a year uh, a, a portion of fish, of sustainable fish, um, it can represent 300 tons of endangered species that would be preserved. So if, it only, if it's only once a year you change your habits and you try to consume a more sustainable fish, it can had a really huge impact. Uh, we, as we explained uh, this morning, uh, we used uh, Aquarium and Scientific Center to promote a uh, program like the Mr. Goodfish Project, uh, project because uh, we have the ability to work with all publics, uh, the scientific and professional, the general public, uh, politician, and the media and the press. And the program has been launched uh, four years ago by uh, a network, uh, which is called World Ocean Network. Uh, it's uh, an association of uh, aquarium, zoo, uh, educational uh, organization, and it's uh, in more than 80 countries, and it represents more than 550 uh, institutes or centers. And we have the ability to promote program through the public who come uh, to visit the, the, the place. And uh, with the World Ocean Network, we have more than uh, 250 million of visitors uh, that we can um, uh, show and explain a campaign on seafood product and sustainability. Uh, so the, the program uh, has been developed uh, in three countries, in Spain, Italy, and France, uh, by three aquariums. So in Spain, it's the Aquarium Finisterrae in the Coroni coast. Uh, in France, it's Nozica in boulogne sur mer And in Italy, uh, it's the Aquario di Genova. Uh, and the aim of the program is to preserve uh, seafood resources by uh, being positive. As we don't have a uh, red list or orange list, it's only a green list. Uh, the fish that you can eat and fish you, you can uh, promote uh, every day. Uh, and the concept of the, the program is to work with uh, the entire chain. Uh, so to engage uh, fishermen, uh, our first partner uh, of the Mr. Goodfish program was the uh, National Committee of Fishery, because we wanted to involve the fishermen. Uh, we also work with uh, a world seller, uh, with a restaurant, with fishmongers, uh, and educational uh, centers too. Uh, we really want to involve the, the, the entire chain of custody uh, because uh, we know that uh, we can communicate in the aquarium. It's easy to sensibilize the, the visitor, but when they go out the aquarium, uh, they need to... Uh, 
to be sensibilized and that other professional repeat the message. Uh, that's why we start to work with restaurant and then fishmonger and uh, the entire chain and involving uh, uh, cash and carries and uh, we retailers too. Uh, so the message is really positive. Uh, we have a, a list uh, which is published every three months uh, and um, which promotes uh, fish you can eat. Uh, the, um, the program has been based on three criteria. Uh, the first one is the fish stocks. Uh, we, we, uh, we are working with scientific, uh, in France it's uh, the Ifremer Institute, uh, which gives us the advice. Uh, so the fish which are on the list are only fish who come from LC stocks. Uh, we also uh, promote fish uh, which has the right size. So what is the right size? First, it's the size of the sexual maturity. So it's the size where the fish uh, has the possibility to reproduce at least once. Uh, to have a, a precaution uh, criteria. And uh, the last uh, criteria we have is the season, uh, because uh, I think for the general public, it's more and more uh, known that we have a season for vegetables and fruits, and it's important to choose the season. But for fish, usually people don't know uh, when they can eat fish. And uh, for us, the right season is uh, the season where the fish is not reproducing. So it's not really easy to find this information uh, on the website, and you have lots of information about uh, uh, season for fish, but you don't really know uh, if it's the, the, f the season where the fish uh, come to breed on the coast, and it's the, the season where you can find uh, the more abundant uh, stocks of fish, or if it's the season of non-reproductive uh, period. So uh, for the general public, it's really easy to explain. Uh, Mr. Goodfish product is a product which has been uh, uh, coached at the right size, the right season, and will come from healthy stocks. Uh, what is uh, innovative from the Mr. Goodfish program is that uh, every three months at each season, we have a committee, a scientific committee, who uh, meet each other. And uh, in this committee, you have the member of the entire chain of custody. So we have scientific, so we have someone from IFOMER, uh, we have someone from the regional committee of fishery, we have a restaurant, we have a fishmonger, we have someone from Metro uh, Cash and Carry for the wall seller. Uh, we have someone from the, um, an association of consumers, and we, uh, and we have uh, someone a representative of fishermen, and we have all these people together uh, around the table, and we, um, ex we, we just look at all the species that are uh, available in an area, and we, we check if it's, uh, it's come from an healthy stock, so this Ifromer will give the advice, uh, but we also, uh, um, check if it's uh, the species as a market uh, for the restaurant and if it's going to be uh, sell and promoted by uh, the, the chain. Um, the, the fishmonger can explain, ah, uh, this fish, I don't really know it. Uh, um, most of people who came to buy just want salmon and cod and it's not easy to promote uh, this fish, so what kind of advice you can give. Um, the Association of Consumers can help uh, giving advice during this meeting. So it's really important every three months to have all these people together, and it's not really easy to bring a scientific uh, fishermen and uh, the chain together, uh, but it works. It's really as it's only positive recommendation. Uh, if w a member of the committee uh, doesn't agree on the species, it's okay, we just don't promote it for the season, and we will add it later at another season, or if the fish uh, start to be uh, more attractive for wall seller, for example. Uh, and when after the, um, the committee, uh, we have uh, several tools who are um, created and sent to all the partners. So we have poster, we have the list on the, the internet uh, website, and uh, we adapt uh, the tool for the several uh, chain of, uh, of custody. Uh, so as we explained, we are uh, working in the aquarium, but also with partners. Uh, it's really important that we have the, uh, the several uh, activity which join the program. So after four years in France, we have more than 500 partners. Uh, most of them are restaurants and school restaurants. 
Uh, so the, the restaurant uh, has to promote at least two uh, species on the menu. Uh, so we created tools to help them uh, to uh, explain to the clients why they choose that fish and why is it the right season to, to eat the fish. Uh, we also work with school restaurants, uh, so we have uh, working also with the chef of the, uh, of the canteen, but also with the educative team. So we've created tools uh, like um, pedagogic, uh, pedagogic kit, uh, posters, uh, Nausicaa, uh, go uh, in uh, the, the schools to present the program and to make interactive uh, animation. Uh, really to create uh, a continuity between the, the meals that the children have and what they learn uh, during schools. Uh, we also are working with fishmonger, world seller, food processor, uh, and we are developing it every day. And in Spain and Italy, it's uh, the same development. We are uh, about 300 partners in Spain and Italy, uh, but they, are, they have more fishmonger because uh, of the culture or the, the organization of the city, it's, it's easier for them. Uh, and the number of partners double every year, so we really hope to, to grow uh, faster and to involve more and more professionals. Uh, that's the kind of tool uh, we've created for restaurants. Uh, so we have uh, small stickers uh, to put on the menu. Um, the objective is really for the, con the, for the clients of the restaurant is when they came to a Mr. Goodfish restaurant, um, they have the information, they, they know what kind of fish is more sustainable. And if they want to do that, because we don't force them, it's really a positive way to inform, uh, they have the logo and they can choose the Mr. Goodfish product. And for us, um, it's a first victory when the, the clients uh, go out to the restaurant and with uh, the information that there is a season to consume fish and there are fish that are more sustainable than others. It's really a first step. Uh, we have created uh, door stickers so to promote uh, the restaurant who join the program. And we have lots of uh, educative tools for children who go to the restaurant. Uh, we are also uh, working with restaurants uh, through the uh, culinary trophy. So we choose one fish and we are working with chef and uh, with the, the culinary trophy to promote uh, a sustainable fish. Uh, for the fishmonger, we have created other tools. So we have the poster with the species that you, uh, you have some example uh, in the crypt. Uh, we also have uh, a tool to put them, to, to show what kind of fish is sustainable on, uh, on the stall. Uh, for the general public, uh, in each aquarium, we had a permanent exhibit. So this morning, you've seen the one in, uh, in the Aquarium de Genova. Uh, this picture is in Nozica. It's uh, the new exhibit uh, presenting the Mr. Goodfish program. Uh, we have an educative team in each aquarium, uh, which are organizing uh, cooking session, uh, educative activities, um, blind tests. So people uh, have, a, have a mask on the eyes and they are testing several fish and we exp are explaining why are they eating that fish? Because it's a, a sustainable one and we are um, comparing several fish. Just to explain that uh, we have cod and salmon, okay, but really um, there are many, many other fish that are really good and they just need to taste it. And we need to, yeah, to, to make the, the visitor and the consumer more curious to, um, to promote the, the fish. Um, we are participating to lots of events at uh, regional, uh, national, and European events uh, level. Um, we are uh, at the Salon de l'Agriculture, uh, which is a, a, um, a salon for uh, the general public to promote uh, food, and we are uh, promoting the, the fish, uh, and we have chefs during the, uh, this salon to promote and to cook uh, less known fishes. Uh, we are also uh, participating to Slow Fish, uh, which is the um, uh, slow food initiative, uh, but specific, specified to uh, fish consumption, and it's uh, organized by the Aquario di Genova. Uh, we are also working with many um, uh, salons for professionals, for restaurants like Equipe Hotel, like the Syrah in France, which is uh, promoting all the products we have in, in France. Uh, we also are working at a European level from the um, uh, Journée Mondiale de the Day of the Sea. 
um, and uh, we are organizing several sea festivals uh, in Boulogne sur Mer or in other cities. So the, it's really important for us to uh, communicate on the program, uh, not only in the aquarium or with professionals, but really with the general public to uh, engage them and to help them uh, being actor uh, and to be more responsible. Uh, the next step for the program is to extend uh, to a national level in the three country. So in France, uh, we are now implemented in, uh, in the, the at the national level. So we are working with other aquarium in France. We are working with the Aquarium de la Porte Dorée in Paris, uh, with uh, Monaco, uh, with the aquarium in, uh, in Montpellier. Uh, with several uh, aquariums who can help us to promote and to uh, try to convey other restaurants and fishmongers uh, around their, uh, their place. And in Italy and Spain, it's the, the same development. Uh, they are working with other aquariums and scientific centers uh, to have an exposition, an exhibit, and to promote the program uh, at a local um, level. And we start to uh, promote and present the program in other countries, and that's why we are here today, is to try to um, develop the program in UK, in Belgium, in Netherlands. Uh, in Belgium, we have several chefs who already try to contact us because they want to develop the program, uh, and that's what we want to do for the next year. And uh, what we, we think is really important uh, uh, with two fish is really to, to have a connection with all our other uh, partners. Uh, for example, with Local Catch, we are really complementary because uh, they have the, um, the work with um, the fishermen and the local uh, uh, stocks and the, um, to um, promote uh, fish at a local um, place. So it's really important for us to work together. Uh, there are lots of initiatives uh, in Euro the European country, in UK, in Belgium, and Netherlands, and we don't want to start everything uh, so we can uh, ad adjust and work with uh, the initiatives that are already implanted in the country. Uh, what is, which is linked to Tourfish is uh, uh, helping the consumer to be more responsible, uh, so, uh, to act and to choose uh, more sustainable fish, so to work all together to promote the right fish and uh, to improve the knowledge on the sea uh, because uh, we don't see what is above, so, the, uh, so we really need to improve and to work with scientists, with institutes, with uh, NGOs, with aquarium, with professionals, all together it will help to, to have a more uh, knowledge which is more important on sea and seafood and consumption. And if you want to have more information, you can have the website, mrgoodfish.com, uh, or ask us after the, the presentation. We started Taste Southeast in, in, in 2002, and we've been working with local produce, producers across the, the region to um, help them with their business, to um, uh, you know, teach them new skills, help them with their trade development, introduce them new to uh, supermarket buyers, to the food service sector, and to, to public procurement. Um, and then in uh, 2007, we were uh, approached by the RDA, the called CEDA, Southeast England Development Agency, to also extend our work to the fishery sector. And um, that's why I'm, I'm here today. I'm now going to find the right slide to give you an overview of the work we did in the fishery sector. Here we are. So in 2002, further down, I'm afraid. Yeah. In 2007, we started our work on Southeast seafood, and it was mainly to raise awareness of the, of the sector in the Southeast and help fishermen along the coast um, improve their catch and improve the price for their, for their product. We promoted the sector to the, the public. Uh, we produced uh, various kind of publications and distributed these widely across the region and through, through fishmongers. We distributed about 400 ice boxes um, to fishermen along the coast here. Uh, they could then take the ice boxes out to sea and put their catch on ice to ensure a better quality um, of, of the catch. 
um, and hence, uh, I, I hope, of course, uh, get a better price for their catch. We also introduced a, a tagging scheme of the more sustainable species, uh, handline sea bass, uh, potted lobster, and um, Dover sole. We did these activities over, f over about four or five years, and then obviously in, in England, the, the funding landscape changed, and we decided to put a, lo a lot of our activities under one umbrella, which we, call, um, which we called Local Catch. So I'm now gonna go upstairs again, that's, uh, and that's what I'm here uh, to tell you more about today. Local catch, but also all our other work in the fishery sector over the last seven years is, is always been mainly aimed at small-scale fisheries. Uh, the south coast has about 26 landing ports. Uh, the majority of the fleet has got under 10 meter boats and fish quite closely along the coast. Um, what we've also learned is that a lot of these small fishermen um, use sustainable ways of fishing. They use hand lines. We have a lot of fishermen who, who hand line sea bass at the moment, or they use tremel nets or drift nets. And, and obviously they're seasonal fishers. Uh, they can only catch so close to the coast what is in season, um, but obviously of good quality. Now, I was really enthused by the comments that Professor Goodwin made yesterday that uh, responsible tourism is, is, you know, that local pr produce actually is really important when it comes to responsible tourism, and that is what we've been, been focusing on for the last uh, 12 years. And I think local catch, um, and obviously I'll, I'll tell you a bit more that, about that in a minute, but it is always encouraged uh, to build supply chains between local fishermen and local outlets. And, and we also have a film later to illustrate that. And we feel that our work, you know, and, and introducing local fish on the menu of local restaurants along the coast, you know, generates a positive experience for tourists um, on a local, economic, environmental, and sociocultural level. Because it's local, it's caught local, it won't have traveled a lot of food miles, it's in season, we, we hope that it's got a low impact on the environment. And our positive uh, promotion of, of the fishing sector, of the species that are caught off along the coast, we hope that it kind of enthuses young people to actually look at the fishing sector as, as you know, a way of, of um, earning money later in life. So, the Local Catch website and app was launched in 2012, so we've been operating it now for about um, 18 months, and it promotes all channels, all supply channels, because when you work with the fishing sector along the coast here, you want to work with everybody, individual fishermen, fishmongers, but also wholesalers and the food service. As I already said, our work is mainly aimed at small-scale fisheries, and um, Local Catch provides uh, a, a, an information hub of promotion and education to consumers and the trade of all species caught along the coast here. Fisheries businesses have to register themselves. When we launched it for the first six months, we, we did a lot of hand-holding and we, you know, we kind of enthused people. We went to visit a lot of fishermen uh, because just sending them a text or an email to say, oh, this is now here, it's just not enough. You need to sit with them, explain what it's all about. Fishermen, as, as you might have picked up over the last two days, they want to go out to sea. They're busy people. They're tired when they get back on land. They haven't got the time or the energy to actually market their catch. And, um, and obviously, we, we have to help them a, a little bit with it. When we started Local Catch, we did it in conjunction with the industry. It was quite an innovative project um, to actually just put everything online. And um, we were worried that um, the fishing sector might not kind of take to it. But we had various focus groups of fishermen, wholesalers, fishmongers, but also chefs and consumers, um, just to make sure that we kind of hit the right um, notes with local catch, that we gave the right level of information and made sure that it, that it appealed to everybody. 
We've, you know, also done a lot of tying with councils and AOMBs, in particular Chichester has been really helpful in kind of, you know, um, spreading local catch in its early stages, because we first piloted in the Henson Sussex area, and over the last uh, 12 months we've rolled it out to a wider area. I like to say that local catch is a bit of an interactive matching service. It can be used by fishermen, mongers, to provide alerts. So any news that they have, they can, when they're registered on local catch, they can put out a message um, about a, a special offer or something they like to promote. Buyers and chefs, and you know, buyers as a chef and consumers can use the application to find out where they can purchase fish, where can they find their local fisherman, or where they can find their local fishmonger, depending on, on who you are and where you are. But also these mongers and restaurants can promote their business to the public. So I'm just gonna whisk through the, the website, the main areas of the website uh, for a bit. This, uh, this is part of the homepage. It uh, shows, uh, you know, obviously direct information about local catch. It gives you information about the seafood locator, um, information about the recipes, the fact sheets. I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. Obviously, it en en encourages fishermen to register. We've recently put also our local catch Twitter feed on the homepage. And you can't see it here, but when you go to the website, you can. The alert section is, 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 is below this. This is our seafood locator, so people can see where their local fishmongers are, their local um, fishermen, uh, restaurants or wholesalers. And as you can see, the majority of uh, businesses registered, and we've got well over 100 now, is based in the southeast, but we are getting more and more interest from um, the West Country and, and Wales. Um, there's even a couple in Scotland, but you can't see that on this map yet. This is an example of a fact sheet. It gives uh, you know, more information about Gernard for consumers who are interested in that. It gives information about uh, you know, what, when it's in season, uh, what size it should be, uh, how to prepare it. Um, and you know, all the, also, we also give the sustainability status, uh, obviously an interesting aspect of our work. This is an interest of our recipe examples. So we basically only have fact sheet and recipes about, of the species that are caught off this coast. We also have a whole library of videos and uh, about how to prepare local fish, uh, how to, in this case, pick a crab, but also how to cook squid, how to prepare and cook scallops. Uh, I mean, you can't see it on here, but the list goes on and on. Uh, very practical, hands-on information for people who want to have a go at uh, doing it themselves. This is a look behind the scenes. When a fisherman registered, he, he will be asked various uh, kind of pages of information about, you know, uh, obviously where they're based, their seller profile, the type of fish they sell, etc. And this is an idea, gives you an idea of uh, a fisherman can post an alert and this is the, the, these are the screens that uh, allow him to do so. Now, Taste Southeast has always been a not-for-profit um, limited company, and Local Catch is, is, is run on that basis. It was developed with, with funding. Um, and, and luckily, recently, more support from other regions in Europe allows us to actually continue that work and, and roll it further out. We've given it a lot of thought, but at the moment, promotion to, to the people on the website is free of charge. And it's very much our aim that once we have a larger number of people registered, then to possibly bring in revenue streams. Because, I mean, I think it's the same for a lot of us public funded um, projects. We've got to find ways of actually running this without public sector funding. In the first six to nine months, we developed over 12 new supply chains with local catch, and we illustrate one of them in a minute. And we, we monitor these supply chains, and I'm really pleased to say that 10 of these 12 supply chains are still in place, and the fishermen and, and wholesalers report sales between 100 and 500 pounds a week because of, of this work. 
Also, when we did a survey at, in the autumn of last year, half of the outlets that are registered, so fishmongers, reported an increase in new customers because of local catch. And we also link with a range of organizations to spread the word, like Billingsgate, Seafood School, Sustainable Sea Fish, sea, uh, or fish Cities, and obviously Claire spoke about that earlier, as well as the WI. Right, I now want to show you a movie that was developed for the Fish and Chips project that we are part of, and that illustrates the work of local catch. Before I continue. It's a connection that's been lost over time with people with food. People find it oh so easy now to be able to go into the supermarket, pick up something off the shelf, not really know where it's come from, not really know what's going on with it. I think it's more and more important that people understand where it's come from, how it's come from. If we want to be, you know, a sustainable and blue sort of community, then we need to be more aware of what we're eating, when we're eating it, seasonal changes and by supporting inshore fishermen, that's what, exactly what you're doing. You're keeping us going, and we can keep you provided with local fish. The reason why we started Local Catch was because I wanted to raise the profile of small fishermen. Local Catch is a website and app improving the connection between fishermen, the fish that they catch, and people that consume fish. People can find on Local Catch where their local fishermen sells their fish, where their local fishmongers are, or for example, restaurants that sell or serve local fish. We live in the National Park, the South Downs National Park. When you're supporting your local economy, the customer's money goes a, a lot further within that local economy. So you're supporting local economy as opposed to supporting supermarkets and their shareholders. It's difficult to find outlets for fishermen. Fishermen like to be at sea. They haven't got the time or the energy to actually sell their fish, then uh, go around the country, you know, delivering their fish to, for example, shops and farm shops. And I wanted to improve that with Local Catch. We try to educate people about the species that are caught off the coast here, uh, how they can prepare them, like how to pick a crab, for example, or how to fillet a fish, but also give them ideas about how they can cook them. People are fully aware of where their products come from and make sure that they're caught sustainably and responsibly. Getting the fish from the local fishermen here in Emsworth means that they all know it has been caught sustainably and responsibly and they know they're getting produce. So definitely people do care about where their produce come from now. The whole principle of these schemes is to educate people, um, to get them involved and, and to see what, what's coming in every day and to get them to try new things learn how to fillet fish and we have fish barbecues to encourage people to come and try different things. It's only small at the minute and the, and the same with local catch, it, you know, it's about every person that goes there who tells someone else, spreads the word. Um, before you know it, everybody in the community is supporting the local boys and uh, people can see that we're harvesting sustainably and we're using sustainable methods and we're bringing fish in that everyone can enjoy. Right, before I want to carry on uh, to the next step for local catch, I just want to bring a, raise a couple of points of reflection. Because um, we've always been working in the local food sector, but since the, the funding landscape, uh, landscape in the UK has changed dramatically, it is very difficult for organizations like ourselves who provide a, a public service, an info service, uh, umbrella organizations to, to get funding for these initiatives. But, um, you know, my board and, and myself, we are committed and we, uh, we uh, although Local Catch is still in its infancy, we feel we want to we wanna carry on. And uh, on that note, I'm, I'm pleased to say that um, with the support from, from uh, organisations in Wales and Devon, we have now decided to register Local Catch as a, as a community interest group. So it's, it's not one of our projects anymore, it will have its own status with the Board of National Representatives. And uh, we, hope to, um, we hope to do that in the autumn of this, uh, autumn of this year, uh, both 
the organisation in Wales, Wales and Devon are also keen to further develop local catch, particularly in their area, but also on a national basis. We hope to develop and facilitate more supply chains, so more local fishermen, so more local wholesalers uh, supply local restaurants and supply local shop with their fish. Um, but another area we really want to develop is the educational material and team up with partners to do much more hands-on on education and, and skill development, not, with, not with just with kids, but also with people in the sector. And then obviously we've got a, a, a wish list, but uh, I'll only touch upon that really briefly. Uh, we like to do more with consumer engagement and build up on interactive social media tools. Obviously there's a lot of, of opportunity there, but it, it requires resources and uh, transfer local catch to a responsive platform, but uh, I won't bore you with uh, technical uh, details. Um, so thank you very much for listening to the local catch promotion. Uh, I don't know if you've already seen them, and I've got quite a lot of promotional fish uh, down there. Uh, please pick them up and distribute them in your own local areas. Um, I'd like to say at this stage that the conference has been really good for us and that we've met lots of new people, and, and people have already approached me saying we want to link with you and we want to work with you. So that's, that's really encouraging. Uh, and if you want to contact me, um, you can email me on henriette at eatcommunications.co.uk. And that is my local catch presentation finished. And I will now carry on with giving you a couple more examples of similar initiatives to Mr. Goodfish and local catch. Because, uh, you know, we felt, obviously, this was possibly a little bit limited, uh, and you're here for inspiration, perhaps, so uh, I'll give you another dose. Um, I'll start with the Catch the Plate initiatives. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Enseparable, but that, that's, a, that's a wonderful website with lots of sustainable seafood initiatives, and make sure that if you run any seafood initiatives that your initiative is on there. There's quite a lot of initiatives in England, on there, uh, but not so many from the, for example, the Scandinavian countries, so something that can be, um, you know, passed on and make sure that uh, they put their initiatives on there as well. The other initiatives I just want to kind of briefly mention, uh, Fish from Kutte, in that runs in the north of Germany, is very similar to Local Catch, and again, it's very much web and app based, and people can use their mobile phone to put messages on a website telling people where they can, can buy their local fish. And obviously you are more aware of, of, of uh, initiatives like MSC. Um, Catchbox, I don't know if anybody's heard of Catchbox, that this was an initiative that was launched last year. It's a community supported fishery scheme whereby consumers buy into a, a fish box for about six or 12 weeks. And um, it's, it's linked to a number of fishermen who then supplies that uh, fish on a weekly basis at a, at a given point. Um, I think on average they charge about six pounds a kilo, and we've got very uh, productive ones in Brighton, Emsworth and Chichester at the moment. Uh, I work quite a lot with the Emsworth one, um, Pete Williams, we've just seen him in the, in the, uh, in the move or in the film. And uh, I'm pleased to say that Catchbox launches another, um, they, you know, another, kind of uh, term uh, in, in the autumn this year. Sustainable fish cities, I mean, Claire spoke about it earlier, uh, very good initiative uh, for, for sustainable fisheries. <coughs> then there is a project called Catch Drive in Holland. Um, again, a fish box initiative, interesting to have a look at. Pavilion in France, um, a, a campaign to very much promote French uh, caught fish. Uh, they work a lot with children and education. And then uh, fresh from the press, and we've just heard this from the audience uh, earlier today, that uh, there is an organization in, in Belgium that has launched a guide, uh, Guide des Espèces, um, a species guide for professionals, so the catering industry. I think it's been available in French for a while, but it's now also being translated into Dutch. So if you're interested in that, go and, and visit that website. A lot of these initiatives are actually available from the Farnet guide, Marketing the Local Catch which was uh, published only recently. 
And uh, if you want a copy, and it, I can recommend it because it's, it's very useful uh, reading, full of information and full of tips, uh, go downstairs to the Farnet stand and uh, hassle Sergei for a copy. Then very briefly, obviously that was very much fisheries orientated, but we've also got quite a lot of initiatives in Europe about plough to plate, so much more land-based. And we've got the regional food groups in England. I mean, Taste Southeast is one of them, but we've also got groups in the heart of England, Elisha, Yorkshire, you know, helping producers, but also, again, helping producers getting into uh, the food service sector, into public procurement. New networks have been set up in Belgium as part of the Fish and Chips project, and Rebecca referred to those earlier in Meetjesland, uh, Rurand in, in, in the Mechelen area, and, and West Flanders. And a similar project has also started in Zeeland called Lekker Regionaal Product, which means delicious regional product. Right, that is the end of our presentation. And I would like now to invite Luke Fist to the stage. And um, I'm going to change language. Sorry. Vanaf nu ga ik het in het Hollands doen. Dus ik hoop dat de vertalers klaarstaan. Uh, Luc uh, die runt een uh, viszaak en uh, horeca, horeca establishment op de markt in Mechelen. En ik wilde uh, echt eens van uh, iemand horen. Wij hebben het overal, hebben het over het um, lokale producten in lokale winkels en, en op markten en dergelijke. Maar ik wil het van iemand anders een kant zien. Hoe, hoe makkelijk is, is het eigenlijk voor een ondernemer om, om lokale producten te vinden? Om het te vinden, dat is eigenlijk niet zo moeilijk. Want iets dat lokaal is, dat is altijd in uw eigen buurt. In uw eigen buurt is dus ook snel bij u en kan op één dag eigenlijk al verkocht zijn. Nu is het wel zo, als wij onze klanten niet opvoeden en als we onszelf niet opvoeden en ook heel belangrijk als we onze medewerkers niet ten uitleg heel degelijk doen, ja, dan komt die klant af, die vraagt kabeljauw of die vraagt een tong, maar die vraagt zich niet af, klopt dat, klopt dat niet. En daar zit een enorme gemiste kans. Er is dus een enorme mode om veel tonijn te eten bij ons, hè, zeker in de zomer, gegrild of vrouw of carpaccio. Dus dan is bij ons de eerste opmerking, mevrouw, hoe gaat je maken? En als die mevrouw dan zegt, ah, ik ga hem grillen of ik ga hem in uh, carpaccio geven, rauw, dan kunnen we altijd zeggen, mevrouw, heb je al eens ooit makreel geprobeerd? Die is vijfmaal zo goedkoop, is van onze kust en is minstens even lekker. Nu, als je op die wijze verkoopt, dan krijgt je in wezen alles verkocht. Maar daarom moet je natuurlijk een heel goed contact hebben met je klant, je klant nooit in het zak zetten en ook over heel de lijn consequent zijn. Dus ook onze gasten, de mensen die met ons meewerken, die moeten die stil beheersen en die moeten die know-how hebben. En ik ben enorm blij wat ik hier die twee dagen gehoord heb, maar dit zouden we eigenlijk moeten kunnen vertalen naar de mensen die in rechtstreeks contact met een detailist zijn. Dus de mensen die effectief aan de klant verkopen, want dat, dat is de laatste schakel. Waarom, uh, wat, wat dreef jou ertoe om, lo om lokale producten uh, in te kopen en te verkopen? Was het de vraag van de consument? Of, uh... nu, een lokaal product is altijd verser, is altijd meer nabij, hetgeen dat ik al gezegd heb. En het maakt het ook zo prettig als ze bij mij op de markt komen op zaterdag en ik heb krabbenklauwen of ik heb langoustintjes of ik heb juist paling in het groen gemaakt. Dat zijn allemaal heel lokale producten. Ik heb die ook niet altijd maar iets dat er niet altijd is, heeft ook eigenlijk meer waarde. Bijvoorbeeld iets dat een seizoen heeft en je stopt ermee. Als het niet het seizoen is, dat heeft een meerwaarde. Want als je dan op de juiste moment, de juiste maat en de juiste vis verkoopt, met een uitleg erbij, dan krijg je vis met een verhaal. En dan kun je die vis verkopen op de juiste moment, als die het lekkerste is, als die het beste is, maar ook als die dikwijls het goedkoopste is. Heb je ook nog enige tips voor producenten uh, of uh, vissermannen die aan, uh, hè, aan horeca geleden heden wil verkopen of aan, aan winkels? Wat, wat moeten ze nou doen? Hoe moeten ze jullie, uh, met jullie omgaan? Nu, nie, niet iedereen is zoals ik. Dus de visserij of de visserijsector bij ons en zeker de groothandels, daar zit een enorme concentratie in. Het ene bedrijf koopt het andere op en helaas, dikwijls gaat het dan nog alleen maar over geld. Dus 
De consument moet er naar vragen en dan de bewuste kleinhandels, ja, die zullen hun ding wel doen. We hebben een enorm voordeel met de pers op deze moment. Dus als je een tv-programma ziet, als je de magazines leest, als je de krant leest, heel dikwijls gaat het over voeding, goede artikels, verstandige artikels. Dus de klanten, zeker de bewuste klanten, die zijn wel mee. Maar een doorsnee groothandel waar het alleen maar over geld gaat, dat is eigenlijk de hel. Bedankt. En dat concludes the end of our presentation.